Hi everyone, welcome to our English lesson for today. We're going to be carrying on planning your suspense story and today we're going to be looking at planning the plot. So, so far you have planned your characters, you have planned your setting and those are the two most important bits you need to have in your head and chances are you've already got a good idea of what's going to happen in your story and I've seen some of your suggestions online. What I would say is that remember this is a suspense story, not a horror story. So there's no need for graphic death to go on. We can't be having that. That's a different genre. Also, make sure that setting you pick is appropriate and reasonable. Okay, so one of the ones we've mentioned, not something that's radically out there. Remember to keep to the genre we're writing. So we're going to start with a little bit of a warm up. Can you spot the errors in this paragraph? There are many of them. So pause the video now, have a go at spotting the errors. OK, so let's have a look together. Just get my pen set up. I have actually got the pen here today so I can do some writing. I hope. OK, so start at the top. Spots car lands in garden. OK, well, I'm assuming that's not a spotty car. I'm assuming that's meant to be some sort of sports car. So sports car lands in guard in. Well, that should be an E garden on Monday. Well, that's not spelt right. So it needs a capital. On Monday evening. Now, it shouldn't be a full stop because that's not a sentence. On Monday evening. Yeah. And what happened? What happened on Monday? It needs a comma because it's a fronted adverbial. So that should be a comma. A dark. We don't need the C. Green. We don't need the E. Sports car. Again, sports car. Hit a T. Well, like a golf T. I don't think that would cause much damage. Hit a tree and cashed. Got lots of money out of it crashed into a garden full stop so as you can see quite a lot of mistakes in just that first sentence the men at the wheel nearly just need an h in there silent h for wheel broke two they've put them the wrong way around so that should be two arms and one leg Wouldn't put legs, because if it's only one of them, we don't have a plural. Full stop. He said he didn't. Ah, well, they've got an apostrophe, which is good, but they put it in the wrong place. The apostrophe should go between the N and the T, because it's did not. The O is the letter that's missing. He said he didn't know. That's good. They've spelt no correctly. About the beds. Ah, I don't think it's meant to be beds. I think it's meant to be bends. I don't think there's going to be um, a bed on the hill. It was very unlikely anyway. On the steep hill. And didn't, again, apostrophe there, see the speed. So we've got speed with two E's. Limit. Sign spelt correctly. Full stop, though, at the end. He left, well, he let hospital. Well, we got, he, that should be he left. Now, hospital needs an I in there, hospital, on Wednesday. Common spelling mistake, this one. Well, it needs a capital because it's the day of the week. And it's Wednesday. With a plaster on his arm and legs. Full stop. Okay. That's that one done. Moving on then. Today we're going to be looking at what the plot of a normal story contains. So not a suspense story. We're then going to be looking at the structure of the suspense stories we've looked at so far. And the one you did last year with Alma. We're then going to have a look at the structure of a typical suspense story. So what they all tend to do. And then you're going to have a go at planning the plot of your story. I'm going to plan a plot of a random story. We're kind of going to do it together. Okay. So, this is the structure of pretty much any story. 
Okay, it's what's called a story mountain. So it starts with the introduction here. Then something happens. Then we get rising action. We then have what's called the climax. That's the main event of the story. And then the resolution. That's afterwards where things either end happily or not so happily. But either way, this leads towards the end of the story. Okay. So what happens in each section? Well, in the introduction, normally characters and settings are introduced. And you've planned both of those, so you're ready to go on that. And background information is given. With the build-up, which is sort of around here, characters interact with each other and the main point of the plot is introduced. And you'll see an example of that in a second. Rising action. Things happen to the characters, the action builds. This is building up to the main part of the plot, the main thing that happens. Then you've got your climax. This is the main event of the story. Think about the Curse of Cogston House. That's where he gets trapped into the clock or he approaches the clock. Think about Alma. That's where she touches the doll. That's what it builds up to. And if you think about the water tower, that's where Bubba is. Well, we don't know exactly what happens to Bubba, but you've got the claw that you can see in his eye. Then you've got the resolution in normal stories, not suspense stories. In normal stories, the climax is resolved. The battle is won happy ending etc. It doesn't always have to be good, it can be bad, but either way the climax ends. It's finished. With a suspense story, the end of the story tends to be the climax. We don't get to see the resolution. Okay, so this is an example of a normal story, remember, we're not with a suspense story yet. This is the rough structure of Harry Potter, the first book. Well, the introduction of Harry Potter, we can see that basically that's where he receives the letter accepting him to Hogwarts. And it's sort of when he goes to Diagon Alley, he meets Hagrid and then he leaves for Hogwarts on the train. So we're introduced to the character, Harry Potter, some of the other characters, Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, Hagrid, the Dursleys, etc. And then he leaves on the train. So Harry Potter has an introduction. Harry Potter also has a build up. That's where he's new to the school. He meet, he gets put into his house. Um, he has his lessons. He meets the teachers. His scar starts, starts to hurt when he's looking at Snape. That's kind of warning us something's going to happen later on. Then he discovers the location of the Philosopher's Stone in here. Part three is your building up to the climax. This is the going up the story mountain. So this is where he discovers that Snape attempts to get Fluffy, get by Fluffy, into the room where the stone is kept. Um, and it's building up to his final meeting, well, his meeting in the story where he meets Voldemort. And Voldemort is behind the attempts to steal the stone and that he is disguised as Professor Quirrell. I think, from what I can remember. And then that's all the climax. Then we have the resolution. That's afterwards where Harry is then... He defeats Voldemort, he's then in the hospital afterwards talking to Dumbledore, and then he goes home. So, even Harry Potter, one of the most well-known stories, one of the most successful stories, follows the same structure. All books follow a basic structure, and you'd be silly to not have your story following a structure like this one, because all books do it, all authors do it. But the difference is with a suspense story... They have this, they have a build-up, they have sort of it getting worse, they definitely have a climax, but they don't tend to have a resolution. Okay, so your story will do this bit, it will go up and up and up the mountain, but it's not going to come back down on the other side. We're going to end on a bit of a cliffhanger, and then all they can do is fall off of it. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the stories we've read so far and see if we can work out the structure that they have. So the, what I've got here is a grid. What I'd like you to do is just make some notes quickly. Pause the video. Can you note down, in the order that they happened, the five main events of each of these three stories? We've read two of them, and I know you did Alma last year. So pause the video now. Bullet point. Make some rough notes of what happens in these three stories in order. Off you go. Okay, so let's have a look. So Curse of Cogston House, 
Luca and Jack decide to go to the house. They're on the park. They decide to go there. They arrive at the house and explore inside. Jack tells the story of the two girls. Jack approaches the clock. The noises intensify. And then you've got two endings, but the one I've chosen is where Jack is trapped in the clock forever. Okay. So we've got introduction, characters and setting. We've got build up. We've got intensifying action. We've got, and then between the two of them here, we have the climax. Okay. This one here, water tower. Spike and Bubba decide to go to the water tower for a swim. We've got the characters. We've got the setting introduction they go for a swim in the tower then climb back out build up spike goes back into town to get bubba shorts bubba waits in the bush intensifying action it's getting quicker the pace is getting there we know something's going to happen something appears and we see it in bubba's eyes climax spike returns and something seems odd with bubba again climax nothing is resolved we don't know what happened for alma alma skips down the street and approaches the shop window character and setting introduction she notices a doll that looks like her tries to get in but can't as she leaves the door opens that's building up slowly nothing too sinister yet but it builds up she goes into the shop and looks around the toy on the floor bangs against the door intensifying action she finds her doll on the shelf and reaches up towards it very much intensifying it's getting more intense it's building up and she's sucked into the hole and is stuck looking out from within climax again we don't have a resolution there's no after so as you can see here we've got three suspense stories three different suspense stories three very good suspense stories but very much three very different ones but they all follow the same structure and that's because like all stories there's a structure that works. The reason these stories are good is because they follow the structure. The structure isn't an accident. And when you're writing your story, you're going to follow this structure because it works and because it means you will have a really good story at the end of it. If you choose to go off and do your own thing, there's a high chance it won't build up that same level of suspense. Okay. So introduction happens first. Then we have the build up. We then have the intensifying action or the build up to the climax. We then have the climax and there's no resolution. Almost always there's just a cliffhanger. And that's the structure you're going to be following. OK, so you're now going to have a go or we're going to have a go together. And then you're going to go and do your plan for your plot but we're really going to break it down into different bits you're going to have a good idea of what's going on in your head but we're really going to break it down so on seesaw is this sheet but i have broken it down into little bits now it's entirely up to you you can either watch me talk through each bit and then go and do the sheet all at once or you can watch me do a bit then you go and do a bit and then come back okay so you I do a bit, you do a bit, I do a bit, you do a bit, etc. Whatever works better for you, I'm happy with. So, you're either, you're all with me at the moment because we're only doing the first one. So, the first thing that happens is the main characters are doing something quite normal, but make a decision to do something differently. So, we've got Jack and Luca and we've got Spike and Bubba. So, the first thing we need to put down is our characters and our setting. Now, I'm going to write a suspense story for you for next week, which I will read to you on Monday. But I'm not going to give it away. I'm not going to plan that story because I want it to be a surprise. I'm going to plan a random story. So, I'm going to say for this one, I'm going to have two characters. We're going to call them Jess and Lucy. What else do I need to put in this box? Well, I need to put where the, where the story is set. So I've got Jess and Lucy and my characters. I'm going to set it in... I'm going to set it in an abandoned factory. There we go. And I'm going to set it in an abandoned factory. So you need to include your characters and your setting in this box. So they're doing something quite normal, but make a decision to do something different. So I'm going to say that Jess 
his her dad talking about where he used to work Okay, so talked about where he used to work, and then I'm going to say that they decide, Jess and Lucy, so J and L, decide to go and have a look around. Okay, so I have put my characters, I've put the setting, and I've given a reason why they're going to go to that setting. They're not just randomly wandering off to some factory. They're going there because their dad, well, Jess's dad used to work there. Okay, so that's what you're going to put in this box. The who, the where, and the why. So if you're doing it step by step, go and do that bit now. If you're not, and you're staying with me all the way through, let's move on. Okay, so the next box down is where they get to the place and it's being described. So obviously that's going to, we're only planning at the moment, we're not actually describing it, but that's going to be the abandoned factory. And I'm just gonna write down a few details that I know I'm going to write about. So the abandoned factory, I know it's going to have a sign outside warning people not to go in there. Because that's gonna be part of my suggesting that something bad's going to happen. It's going to have um, the main door is, um, I'm going to say, is bolted and has a lot of locks on it, too many locks, as if why does it need that many locks? because that suggests something bad's happening inside or happened inside. So that's what you need to do for that bit. You're going to put your setting down and put a couple of things you're going to make sure you describe to make the reader feel a bit creeped out. So off you go with that one. Okay, moving on to the next one. So we've got a flashback. Now, this is used to tell us about something bad that's happened in this setting in the past, which makes us realize something bad might happen again. Okay, so for mine, I'm going to say that Jess remembers her dad Jess remembers her dad telling a story Um, I'm going to say, and this is the thing, I'm thinking of it as I go. So I need to tell a story. Um, okay. I'm going to tell a story of a former worker. Um, who one day, yeah, I've got it, one day said they could hear weird noises. Everyone ignored them. And then the next day, and then they were never, they never turned up for, they didn't turn up to work the next day. Didn't turn up to work the next day. And were never seen again.
Now, what I've just realised is that I can't just put strange noises. I need to say what those noises are because those are the noises that the character's going to hear later on. So I'm going to say that instead of weird noises, it's going to be um, footsteps. Footsteps, but no one's there. There you go, footsteps. Okay, so that part of the story, you need to talk about what your flashback is going to be. What's happened in the past in your setting that's going to make us realise it's not a good place to be. Okay, so the next one then is the characters explore the setting and find clues which remind them of the mysterious event from the flashback. So in mine, they're going to be wandering around the factory. Going to be wandering around the factory. Um, and then they're going to one of them thinks they hear a strange noise but they're not sure what it is yet and also they find missing posters on the wall. Okay, they find missing posters on the wall. That's kind of the, the warning, it's linking back to the flashback. Okay. So, the next thing we're going to look at is the characters explore the setting and find clues. Oh, we've already done that one. Okay, something happens which makes us think that the mysterious event is going to happen again. So, for me, my victim of choice is going to be Lucy. Lucy um, I'm going to say that she's sort of left alone somewhere, but why would she be left alone somewhere? Um, Lucy sees something flashing in the corner of an office. and explores inside. Jess doesn't realise and keeps on going. Okay, so actually my victim's going to be Jess. Yeah, Lucy's going to be exploring the office. Maybe there's some missing posters on the table. Again, everything looks a bit weird. Now Jess hears the noise again. But this time knows its footsteps. She can identify it. There you go. That's what's going to happen. Okay. And then obviously we're going to build up to the climax. All right. So the climax section, which is the ending part of your story. So, you know, what? I'm not going to put what happens in the climax. I'm not going to ruin it because I might write this story as well. I quite like it. Uh, but I've got another one that I want to write more. So I'll see. So. You've, I've then talked you through pretty much all of the boxes that are on that sheet. You need to go through and write out your plot, okay? But you need to put in your climax and your ending. Now, remember, there should be no resolution. 
it should just build up to the climax climax happens cliffhanger we don't know what happens beyond it hopefully you could see through me doing the plot with you you need to put quite a bit of thought into how things link together a good suspense story there's common things weaving through it to build that suspense and make the reader go hold on i've seen that before think about the water tower the symbol keeps appearing think about the curse of cogston house the ticking of the clocks keeps happening it makes you think hold on 10.31, the time keeps appearing. It makes you realise something a bit odd's happening and you need to do that with yours. Okay, right. For now, thank you very much for listening. I hope you were enjoying that and I look forward really to seeing your plots next week. We get to write them. Goodbye for now.